Finally, we do this. I know. Jesus. This is, you're the first episode of the new season. Ah, <laughs> yes. So Francesco is the, what are you, the uh, head of the music staff here? What's your? No, I am the assistant conductor for Falstaff to Riccardo Frizza. To Riccardo Frizza. To Riccardo Frizza, yes. Francesco is one of the most in-demand uh, conductors in the Chicagoland area. I'm trying. I'm trying. trying. And you also <laughs> now regularly guest with San Antonio. I do. I do. It'll be a couple of seasons in a row, so. You've guested with um, Santa Barbara. I did. Uh, opera on the James for many years. Yes, sir. One time uh, at Opera Southwest. One time at Opera years Southwest. Years ago. Waiting for that next invitation. <laughs> <laughs> well, we couldn't even get you at this point now, I'm pretty sure. Uh, you so, know, until you tried to. All right. So, so give us... You're, you're Canadian, right? I'm Canadian. You're Italian-Canadian. I'm also Italian. I have an Italian citizenship. Your parents were born in Italy. Yes, sir. They're both born in Sicily. Sicily, for those of you watching, is the country... It's a little <laughs> island that my my it's place, Calabria, country. is sort of kicking. Yes. It's with, the soccer ball that, that the toe of the boot is so, kicking. There we go. It's the 7-Eleven of the Mediterranean. <laughs> I love it. It's been conquered more times. I then... Uh, it's unbelievable. Yeah. I know. So you... you But you were born in Canada. Yes. Born in Toronto. Mm -hmm. And you studied piano growing up. Yes, sir. Piano from the age of six. And then conducting straight, straight from when I started my undergrad as a piano performance major at the University of Western. Like, Ontario. it's safe to say that you are a, a classical music fiend, right? Like, you know less about pop music than I do. I, if if you know very little, then yes, I know less than you. Yeah, yeah, yeah. So yeah. you grew up playing classical music, listening to classical music. That's it. Now, did you always want to be a conductor, or no? No, no, I always wanted to be a pianist and a concert pianist. I, I, that's why I went, I did the auditions and went, got into the schools and to a teacher that I wanted to study with. Um, McGill you went to, right? I went to University of Western Ontario for my undergrad and then I did McGill for my, for master's. So. All right, so what was the seminal moment when you went, all right, all right, this is what so I wanted. So this is, this is exactly what happened. And not too many people know the story, but a few now everybody, do. now, now every, all now four, everybody's going to know. All six this. people that watch this are going <laughs> to. So I was in my undergrad, um, first year of undergrad at University of Western Ontario, okay. and uh, I was in a sight singing and ear training class that I knew I was going to exempt out of. <laughs> let's so. ex let's explain what that is for people who don't really know. Exactly. Okay. So, sight singing in here. Okay, so the, that's where they give you sort of solfege, and you have to, at first sight, they give you something, and you should be able to sing it. You should yep. be able to know what the intervals are, sing the intervals. Um, so, either reading and playing. I think there was a little bit of keyboard stuff in there, too, which, of course, would have not been very difficult for me. But Because uh, it's you and a bunch of singers, right? Right. Yeah, so, okay. But you have to... You had, I had to do, I think, the first two weeks of the class or something, or the first month of the class before you could take the exemption test to get out of the class. Okay. So I was in the class, and I asked to go to the bathroom, <laughs> and uh, I leave, yeah. and I'm walking around, not going to the bathroom, and I leave my coat, my bag, my backpack, everything in the class, and I hear the orchestra playing, and at this point, I, I you know, heard the orchestras from far away, you know, mostly gone to piano concerto concerts at the Toronto Symphony and stuff like oh, that. Okay. So I never really had an orchestra experience, right? So in your face, and yeah. I'll never forget. It's room 102. I open the door, and the horns playing Shostakovich 10 are right, oh my. right in my face. So I stood there for the entire two hour, whatever the remaining part of the rehearsal <laughs> missed was. Missed the rest of your class. I missed the rest of my class. I left my jacket in. Another class had gone in and gone. My my books, my bag, and everything were still in the class because I waited for Jerry Summers, the conductor, um, that was that was the conducting professor at the University of Western Ontario. And, uh, this undergrad, I, right? So yeah, like undergrad. 19, I'm, 20, I'm 18. 18. Yeah. 17, 18 years old. And um, so I waited for him to finish the rehearsal and I had no idea who he was. He had no idea who I was. And I waited for him to come down off the podium. And I said, you know, I don't know who you are and you don't know who I am, but you are going to teach me how to do whatever it is you do on that, on the box over there. I need to learn how to do that. Right. So you're going to teach me. And of course he said, that is such a he Francesco said, who the fuck are you? Right. And uh, he said, all right, if you're serious, before next Tuesday's rehearsal, come to my office. I'll give you one lesson. Wow. And I'm... I'm pretty
pretty sure that's the only conducting lesson I've ever had. <laughs> he taught me the patterns. Right. <laughs> yeah, he's taught me the patterns. I mean, that's the thing. You know, that's no, a dirty secret. The like, thing is such bullshit. There's like, no tea. I mean... What, so, what? Like, you're going to pay someone to... Yeah, I know. You got, there's, there's no way to... T- there's just no way to teach it. I don't... I it don't really think. is one of those things you could either do... You could learn to a certain point, I guess. You could learn sure. the physicality of whatever and You could learn, like, do, but, claps and how to read sure, certain sure, things sure. and get really good yeah. at... And, Developing your ear, sure, but the mechanics of it are so such a small, ridiculously yeah. <laughs> simple. Like, yeah, yeah. So that's what I did, and then uh, he said, "Come back when you can do these patterns." <laughs> and I think I went back when you like, can literally yeah, count when you to can four, literally count right. to four, six, five, whatever he gave me <laughs> on this little sheet. I wish I'd saved that sheet. Oh, I know that, that's and, kind of um, right. And then that was it. So I went back and I showed him that I could do the patterns. I studied really hard, practiced for whatever it was, showed a week or two. And four. then he said, yeah. all right, here's Edgar Varese's Octandra. This oh my. That was the first thing that I did. And the first thing that I ever performed was a friend of mine in the jazz band, because I also played, certainly played a lot of Are you jazz band jazz? music. Yeah, of course. I played a lot of jazz. I was in wow. all the concert, all the, all the jazz bands, all the jazz ensembles. And the first thing that I ever conducted was a concerto for drum set, which was the drummer from the jazz band. Oh, cool. And I think four or five marimbas and xylophones or something like that. It's the first thing I ever conducted in public. And then I think I did the, the Varez on a concert. Oh, my. Later. So you started but with contemporary music. Started with contemporary music, man. The first thing I did with the orchestra was the Coriolan Overture with Beethoven. Yeah. Oh, nice. Yeah. It was very, very nice. A lot of fun. That's right. And so you don't... It's, you don't do just opera at all. Like you do a lot of symphonic stuff. You're yeah. the music director of the Highland Park Strings yep. of the Skokie Valley Symphony. Yes, sir. Well, but you're you're kind of focusing on opera the last five six years, right? But, yeah. So you you regularly are assistant conductor at Santa Fe Opera, yep. at Dallas Opera, at Chicago Lyric, and pretty much everywhere but the Met. At this point. Everywhere but the Met at this point. Yannick, if you're watching, right? <laughs> Anytime. <laughs> And we both know Yannick because you, you... I knew him from Montreal. I've known Yannick since we were in our early 20s together in Montreal. Yeah. And I know Yannick because he was he made his American debut conducting at Sarasota Opera when I was an assistant. Oh, I was like a photocopyist for the music staff there. And he is two weeks older than me. There you go. So I'm, I'm catching up. <laughs> yeah. Did you do Jerry's a lot of those in... conducting programs like Aspen or, or no. Um, Tanglewood? No. no, I had to work every summer. I right. either worked with my family in the summer times or uh, then making wine and crushing grapes. Yeah, yeah exactly. Feet. That's exactly what we do. <laughs> <laughs> All right. Race number one with Maestro Migliotto. Back there. Great, thank you. I'm going to get you for race. He's not going to get me. I'm going to get you for race. Mid-race, we got, an, we got the cookies from JD's Chippery. I think it's fantastic. JD's Chippery, we got an um, a M&M, okay. peanut, uh, peanut butter. I like peanut butter. And peanut butter with chocolate chip. I'm gonna eat that one. Go ahead. Thank you. Knock it out. So how'd you feel about your first race? My first race, I felt pretty good. It's, uh, I was 10 seconds behind you, I'll say. 84 seconds, my fastest lap, but. You wiped out. No, 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 I didn't wipe out. Oh, you're stalled. I came out. I stalled. So as soon as I came out of the thing, me and three other people stalled, like right at, right on the first. Like we didn't even make it to the turn. Oh as yeah. I, yeah, we stalled. There was like three of us that were stalled, and then they had to come back out and restart us. But I got the hang of it. I mean, you, it's it's interesting that you have like to figure out what the car can take and what the car can do on the turns. Because like at first you go and you're like, hey, I'm going fucking fast. You don't think it's fast because you yeah. come out of there and you're like, oh, right. this is going to be like, like a little kid be, thing. But it's fast when you realize you've you got a turn. Away and you're like, oh yeah, my God. The, the first, like that first major turn, you're just, you know, I let go of the gas. I used the brake probably way more than I should have, but I learned to go faster. But there was a couple of people, there's one guy that wiped out right in front of me. So I'm glad I missed that guy. Yeah. And, uh, cause that could have been bad, but I did get past. And then I started like followed, like I followed the fastest guy that I could be closest behind to see how they took the turns. Yep. I, I, 
I love it, man. It was, it was a lot of fun. This is a lot of fun. If you're a conductor or anyone that Tony invites to do this, I highly recommend you just do it. Yep. You hear Good that, folk, Ricardo huh? Muti? <laughs> <laughs> I wanted to at some point get, not Muti, but. Why not? I mean, you yeah, would do I it? Mean, <laughs> no, he wouldn't. But, but I would love to get like Luigi or somebody. No, oh, he would love it. Some, some like super high end. Uh, Luigi would do it. Emmanuel Bion would do it. I think Emmanuel's too tall for the cart. He might be too tall for the cart. <laughs> but it'd be fun to get him in here. Oh, yeah. I thought it was great. You would do it. Michael Christie would do it because the guy flies, of he would. He flies planes. Of course so. he would. Mm -hmm. um, Michael would totally do this. So you're going to get another shot at this because we're yeah. going to do onboard helmet with you. My onboard. goal is to get under 80 seconds. Oh, you could totally do it. Yeah. You could totally do I it. I think I can do it now. Don't use the brakes so much. Just twice. Just come off. Gentle. And how I'm much already. do you weigh now? 153. 155, 153. Depends. Yeah. Depends on how much pasta I ate the night before. You don't know. <laughs> Fucking cookies are so good. Um, but that, you know, every 10 pounds is a tenth of a second. I know, right? <laughs> Load up. <laughs> Why do you think I've been dieting? Oh my god. Attention on AKC racers and get heat 38 to the grid, please. Heat 38 That's us. Grid. We're up. Ready. It's time to go. All right, here. Thank you, sir.
sometimes I think the tradition of opera isn't just like whatever you hold and notes to do this pauses think you know that's I mean the tradition should be that you know the opera you know the language you know the works you know the composer you know what's happening yeah and the tr like it we should be passing down not only those things but ways to to make that a reality now instead of trying to always do a standard way of something that happens. I know. That that's that's what I hate about opera. like Traviata. It's like, you know, everyone does the same stupid slowdown and, and they the do same. the same hold on this thing. They exactly. add the same measure in the Brindisi. And it's like, uh, it's so weird how it's just, it's kind of accepted that I did a, a, a Traviata in a company that will remain nameless. And I remember like, you know, the last page, I think it's the doctor and, mm -hmm. and the, Anina and the someone else they all say oh Rio Dolor right yep. and I got to the part and like none of them sang it and I was like so what's going on there they're like oh well nobody sings this I'm like yeah. he fucking wrote it like what do you mean nobody sings it somebody sang it like somebody must have sung something he, or the doctor at least says it's spent or something yeah it's but, like uh, it's like oh well no you know somebody decided at some point not to do it so now nobody does it yeah like, that, that's, and that's, that's the, the dumbest reason the thing for me is I think tradition should also tradition should mean courage yeah. And courage based on a knowledge of everything around that score and everything the composer tried to put into that score. Yeah. Courage. That's what we're missing. We're missing courage and integrity, and we're all we, we all just want to sort of do the what everybody did. The problem did for us, so though, is, though uh, is that is that when belts are tightened, the first thing to go is orchestra rehearsal. I know. It's like the first thing they're like, well, I know. people don't really know. Yeah, and maybe no, people they, don't know when it's bad, but they sure as heck know when it's really, it's good. really good. And it's really One good nine times out of ten because you've had an adequate rehearsal time. Yep. Sometimes it's okay, and it has, I mean, you know this many times, it has way, it's way better than it has any right to be under sure. the circumstances. Of course. But with enough orchestra rehearsal time, you can get any group sounding good. To at least to a level of understanding where together with what's on the stage and yep. you can tell that it's a, a more cohesive thing. You notice the orchestra less and you notice the drama more because the orchestra becomes part of it. Um, you came you to, to Chicago after the Berenbaum years or was it? Uh, right at, no, no, no. Definitely during Berenbaum. During Berenbaum. I came, I started coming to do some of those operas like 99, 2000, 2001, around there. Right. And then I moved just a little bit after that, probably 2002, three, something like that. The thing that I took away from that the most with Baron Boyman and, and all the other conductors, people that you see at the top, is that they they always say, you know, ask me for what you want because I want to do it. I want, right. they want to do the best. Right. They want the best. They don't want any compromises. They don't want anything. So I've taken from that um, a lot of my attitude towards what I try to do. Yeah. You know, ask I mean, for the best. I always, what's the, what's the worst? always want the, worst the best. Happen, yeah. What's the worst that can they happen? They could just not do it. Yeah. <laughs>